What's up everybody? Welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about DIY kitchen gadgets. I hope everyone's doing great. Today we're going to be talking about kitchen gadgets. A question that I often get asked is, why do I have so many 3D printers? Well, I think that they're some of the most awesome inventions ever, and I love being able to design something and see it come to life. Much like Frankenstein, I use electricity to make my imagination a reality, but instead of using human flesh, I use plastic. And this series is meant to show you how you can apply 3D printing in your home and anyone can jump in and start learning. I started just over a year ago and I've learned a lot along the way. The only thing you need is perseverance and a 3D printer. It's really amazing that we live in a time where any figurine or fabricated part or even those dreaded fidget spinners can just be created in the comfort of your own home. Okay, enough of my rambling, let's jump into it. I made three kitchen gadgets in my makerspace, also known as a corner in my living room. I'm gonna briefly go over why I came up with these, and then we'll talk about how I made them, and finally, we're gonna test them and see if they really work. First up is a sponge holder. I know it always grosses me out when I see a sponge sitting in its own gunk and it starts to fester and get nasty, so my wife came up with this design where the sponge sits above some drainage holes and the water runs off into the sink. This took me less than 15 minutes in Fusion 360. As you can see here, it's as easy as drawing the outline of the model, then extruding it out of the drawing and bam, it's good to go. I placed an extruded edge on the top face of the model where the sponge would sit and I added some fillets to make it look a little classier. I was trying to decide between actual holes or slots for the drainage and I settled on rectangular slots. I then used a pattern tool to cut them out of the model. I then brought it into Slicer Prusa Edition and I positioned it so it would have as little bridging as possible. And this is what it looks like. I think it came out pretty nice, but please tell me what you guys think in the comments below. Next up is a tuna strainer. A couple of weeks ago, I was making a tuna sandwich and it always bothers me when I'm struggling to open the can and then I have to use that flimsy lid to push all the water out and my hands end up reeking of tuna for the rest of the day. So I finally thought to myself, there's gotta be a better way. I jumped back into Fusion 360 and I came up with a little circular strainer made from the measurements of a tuna can. I added some holes so that the water could drain out easier and I made it thick so it could stand up to the force of straining the water out. It worked, but I still had the issue of water getting all over my hands. So I jumped back into Fusion and I took a different approach this time. I left it as a solid circle and I created a bend where the water could drain out. I'm gonna test it out now, so let's see how it came out. All right, we're here. We're gonna test out the tuna strainer. I have the strainer here. It has the bend right there to let out all the water. Then I got my can of tuna, chicken of the sea. All right, let's try it out. Uh, I only have one can of tuna left, so I need to make this work. Just... Here we go. I'm actually, this is really exciting. Here we go. It's working. <laughs> It works. I get on. It got on my hand a little bit, but it works. <laughs> Sweet. Ta-da. Still stinks. The last idea is not something that I came up with, but it's a tool that many kitchens have. I own a garlic press, and I purchased it a while back for about 15 bucks. But I wanted to see if I could print one that would actually function, and this was by far the most fun model to design and print. I did a quick drawing in Fusion of the carriage, and then I did the quick drawing of the smashing mechanism. I added some holes so that the garlic could come out, and I was so proud of myself that I didn't even stop to see if it would actually rotate. And after I printed it for seven hours, it didn't. So this was an entire seven hours of printing time that I was not gonna get back. But that is part of the process. We make something, we mess up, and we go back and we try again. Then I went back into Fusion, and I removed the edge that was blocking it, and I made it a little smaller to reduce the print time. It came out great this time, and the only thing I think I would change is I would make the little block that actually smashes the garlic a little thinner so that there's less touching up afterwards. So let's see if it works. All right, I don't want everyone to make fun of me. I couldn't find a shorter screw, so I have an extra long screw in here, but it still works. So we're about to test out the garlic press, and then I got my clove of garlic right here. Let's go for it. All right, here we go. Testing out the garlic press. I have, I didn't, I didn't keep the skin on it, because I'm afraid that that would be too difficult for it. So we're gonna test it out, see how it goes. Um, all right, here's, here goes nothing. Come 
Come on. It, it's working. It's just needs a lot more force. All right, I think that's the best. That's the best it's gonna get. It did it. It's just not very good. I had a lot of fun designing these and printing them, and I had even more fun getting to test them for the first time with you guys. I hope you all had fun, and I hope you learned something along the way. Please let me know what you all thought. I have included the files for all the kitchen gadgets that were tested so you can try them out yourselves. If you have any ideas for anything you want to see created and tested, let me know in the comments below. I look forward to seeing you next time. I appreciate you watching. Thanks.